In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to import a external library from C++ into Visual Studios. And I'm going to be going over static linking and dynamic linking, what are the differences, which one I would prefer, and yeah, I'll do my best in explaining just about everything you need to know about importing a external library into Visual Studios. Also, I did get a new mic, so my voice might be a little bit different and some tuning may be needed, but we'll see how this video goes. So let's jump right into it. All right, so I have a blank Visual Studios project opened up right here. And to do anything interesting like make a window or draw graphics, we need to use an external library. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using a library called GLFW, which is a window library. So basically we can make windows using this. So I have it in my desktop right here. Let's go ahead and double click. And yeah, I have a folder called include and a folder called lib. All right, the very first thing you're gonna wanna do when you're importing a library is to include the headers. So to add the headers into Visual Studios, that's actually quite simple. So go ahead and click on your solution and right click. And if we go all the way down to properties, a new window should pop up. And let's go ahead and click on C++. And on the very top, there's a setting called, or setting, whatever you wanna call it. It's, it's called additional include directory. So basically it wants us to specify a directory, a folder, or in other words, a path for our includes the folder containing all our headers. So yeah, we can manually just type in the path, but since I'm a little bit lazy, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this arrow. And if we go ahead and click on edit, a new window pops up. And if we just click on this and hit new line, click these three dots here, we can go ahead and select the folder that we want. So in my case, it's in desktop. I have a GLFW library folder. If we go into include and all our headers would be in the in this GLFW folder. Now you don't want to include the GLFW folder itself. You're gonna wanna include the include folder, the folder named include, and I'll explain why in just a second. But yeah, just make sure down here it says include. So let's go ahead and select that folder. Go ahead and hit okay and okay. Perfect, so now on the very top, we can go ahead and write our very first include from this library. And there we go. Now, the reason I didn't include the GLFW directory, well, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but think about it this way. Let's say in our case, this GLFW API uses two headers, the GLFW3 and this, and this GLFW3 native. But say this was a different library and it had a bunch of headers, and there was this one header internally calling on a bunch of other headers. So for a perspective here, imagine this header is calling on this header. So this header is including on this header. By convention, inside of this header, if you were to go inside this header, you'd see that the way GLFW3 includes GLFW3 native is it has a GLFW in front of it to specify that is in the GLFW directory. So what does this mean? This means that if you imported the GLFW directory, you could import the GLFW library like this. And so, although we could have made our lives simpler and just included the GLFW library, that way we don't need to write down, we can just keep it like this, that would lead to internal errors because internally, this GLFW3.h calls on other headers and it calls it using this convention. And this, and this is just a convention thing, but, and it's not only GLFW3 that uses this, it's a lot of libraries have this way. And it's kind of neat because when you have this GLFW right here, it kind of tells us which library this header belongs to. So yeah, um, that's the reasoning behind why I didn't include GLFW directory. I just included the include directory and I manually typed out this just to avoid those internal conflicts within the GLFW.h. But yeah, I talk too much. Anyways, now you guys can see that we can now successfully use GLFW3 functions. So we can go ahead and write gl fw and here's the function in it. Yeah. And it works. It recognizes it. So that's great. But we're not done. We, we imported the headers, but we didn't actually import the library itself. So we're halfway there. To import the library, let's go back to our file explorer. And let's hop out of the include and let's go into the lib folder. And most of the libraries that you download from the internet are gonna have these three files, okay? This doesn't. This is not the case for all libraries, but this is the case for most libraries. Anyways, that being said, there's something called static linking and dynamic linking. 
And the best way to explain this is if we hop over to Visual Studio. If we go ahead and right click on our solution and go to open folder in File Explorer, we get a bunch of stuff. But the more important thing is if we go to debug and my air conditioner just did turn on. So I don't know if that's going to come in the recording. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Anyways, um, we see example.exe, the application. So why am I showing you this? I'm showing this because when you import a library statically, all the contents of that library are built into this application. I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but just everything, all the contents of that, all the functions are built in and compiled into this one application. Now, however, that's not the only way. There's also something called dynamic linking. Dynamic linking is we don't stuff all the contents into the executable, but we have our actual DLL, our actual library within the same directory of this application. So it's not built into the application but during runtime, this application will use that library. And the reason I tend to dislike dynamic linking is because, and don't mark me on this, but it could potentially be slower since at runtime, it is finding and using those functions from the library. And when you're shipping out your game or whatever you're making, you have to have your DLL in the same directory as your application and that could make for a bigger hassle. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do both ways in case you're interested. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and link GLFW statically. So, <clears throat> so we see three files. One is glfw.dll, one is glfw.dll.lib. All right, so to link statically, you're just gonna wanna use the glfw.lib. So back into Visual Studios, if we go ahead and right click and go to properties, go out of C++ and let's click on linker and if we go to input we're gonna have to type in the path of the library so that is this file right here we're gonna want to have we're gonna want to specify the path of this file so I kind of don't want to do that so a better approach for this is if we go to general there's a additional library directories setting or whatever you want to call it and in here similar to adding headers we just specify the directories of not the headers but the libraries so uh, let's do the same thing. We're gonna click on new line and we're just gonna find that folder that contains the library. So, so for my case, I believe it's in desktop, glfw library and lib, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and select that folder, click okay. Now we can go back to input and we can just specify the name of the file. We don't need to specify the entire path because we already specified the directory that the library is in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click here just copy this and we'll just paste this right here and always remember to put a semicolon because the semicolon separates this library from this library if we remove this semicolon you could see that the, you can probably see the problem over here so just make sure you have a semicolon okay after we're done with that you can go ahead and hit OK and alright we should be all set so just to test if this is up and running I'm going to head over to the official documentation of GLFW and copy some example code so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and go ahead and paste it here. And I am going to delete this line right here because this is actually an OpenGL function and we didn't import the OpenGL library so it would error us if we kept that in there. Alright, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and run this. And there we go, we get a window. So that's how we import a library in C++ into Visual Studios and that's how you link statically. And again, in my opinion, linking a library statically is the best way because I believe it to be the fastest way. And as an additional bonus, you don't have to have that library sitting in the same directory of your application. So it does end up being more cleaner. However, as a counter side to that, if you take a look at the actual size of our application, you could see it increased dramatically, but that's still okay. I'd say as a pro tip, include all the libraries statically where you can and some libraries that you download from the internet won't give you the option to import it statically but where whenever you can whenever you can import it statically do it it's, it's worth it at least in my opinion so that's pretty much it if the only thing you were interested about is importing a library statically then you're all set and you can click off this video but if you want to import a library dynamically for any reason stick around and i'll show you just how to do that so if we go ahead and close that up and and head back over to our settings let's go ahead and get rid of this 
so let's go ahead and get rid of that okay so now we're gonna want to head back over to this folder right here with all the library files and instead of using the glfw3.lib we're gonna be wanting to use these two files right here so to get us started over at additional dependencies where we type in our libraries the name of our libraries go ahead and click on this or right click let's just copy this name let's go ahead and paste it right here so we're gonna be wanting to use the .lib file so glfw3dll.lib and go ahead and hit ok however we're not done just yet there's one last thing to do so if we head back over to our application so where our application is being built we're gonna wanna copy this folder not folder sorry we're gonna wanna copy this file right here glfw3.dll so let's go ahead and copy this paste it right over here and I think I sort of mentioned the reason for this a bit earlier in the video and the reason is that this application needs to use this library during runtime and so in, and so that's the reason why we have to have this DLL file always inside the same folder as this application but let's go ahead and give that a shot so I'm gonna go ahead and run this and there we go we got a window so yeah we can, we can open that up and close that up so yeah that's basically the gist of that so that's how you import a library both statically and dynamically if you did make it to the end thank you so much for watching i hope this video helped if you do happen to have any questions leave your questions down below in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them but with that thank you guys so much for watching and have a good one